Hey, everybody, come on in, come on in. I know some more folks are going to be coming. It's, it's the weekend. Everybody's like, you know how it is. Hey, Monica, I love your hair. You have some beautiful hair. And I see you on Facebook, and I don't see all this beauty here. <laughs> hey, Roger. You got your green screen? <laughs> working on it, working on it. Good, good, good. Well, we're going to chit chat a little bit today. Yeah, and let folks come on in. We've got this chat room here, too. Hey, Sherry. Can you hear me, Sherry? Sherry, can you hear me? Hey, good to see you. Uh, but we've got the chat room over here if you guys want to get hop in the chat room. If you have questions or something like that, or you may have something you want to share. Because I'd love to hear from you. I mean, I'm, I just, um, I wanted to do this Rolanda's reinvention retreat because reinvention is one of my favorite things to talk about. I mean, you know, I've done it so many times and I know that it saved my butt and it's kept my life interesting and, and it kept a lot of fun and, and unpredictability about it. Now that can be good and bad. That's what entrepreneurialism is. But I tell you what, I'm doing life on my terms and choosing the things that make me happy. And I think that now is a time where, you know, some of us are forced to jump off that cliff. I've changed a lot of times because I wanted to, and then times because I had to. And I think we're all finding that. But the main thing I wanted to do, other than just talk about my favorite topic, reinvention, um, was just to check in with people too. I don't know about you guys, but you know, every once in a while I'll be on social media and you know, a little niece or a friend or a friend of a friend will say something like they're depressed or, you know, feeling a little lost. And, you know, I just think that now's the time to, to, to try to reconnect as much as, as we can. And especially, you know, in these changing times, there's such, such change going on. And, and I just wanted to see how everybody's dealing with it. Um, you know, we are, we're having to reinvent whether that was a choice or not, a lot of us. And I just want to be here to remind you, come on in, you guys, uh, that reinvention can be one of the greatest things that ever happened to you. Um, I know that this is not an easy time for anyone. My goodness, look at us. We were all ready. I don't know about you. Listen, back in March, I was packed up and moving, leaving LA. I was moving back to New York. You know, my place I'd missed for 20 something years, I was moving back. You know, this was my stomping ground. I'd set up my agents there. I had comedy shows scheduled in this new career I was trying. And then boom, COVID hit. You know, so many people had their businesses they were planning. They had their budgets all set. I just talked to a record producer yesterday who was telling me, you know, he had all these houses everywhere because they fly to New York and record and they fly to LA. And he said, honey, I live in Denmark now. He said, because two years of concerts were canceled. I'm like, so I don't know if it's any blessing, but everybody's going through it. It's not, you remember back in the day when you, you were the only person trying to get some, some unemployment checks and couldn't tell nobody. <laughs> well, it's a different day today. Everybody understands it. But I think also, like I said, is these are the times that test our souls but make us whole. I mean, these are times that you can really embrace and say, listen, this is something I've always wanted to try. You know, this is something I've always wanted to do. My heart is singing to try this. I'm a little scared. I just need some, some support. I just need an accountability partner or maybe a, a team to meet with or, or just um, somebody to bounce ideas off with. Or maybe you just need permission to do it. I mean, you know, I asked the question, why haven't we re reinvented ourselves if that's something that, that we love and we, we think we want to do? And a lot of times it could be, I mean, it could be lots of things. It could be, you know, that time when your daddy told you, oh, you want to be a writer? Well, you take that R out of writer and put an A there, you'll be a waiter. <laughs> you know? That's what my dad told me. I was like, 
I guess I could never be a writer. Then I turned out being a journalist and then wrote a doggone book, which is right here on my shelf. <laughs> So sometimes when you, you, you know, cause we are victims sometimes of, of, of what, so I was listening to somebody on the internet the other day. He said, sometimes we get locked in goop soup. It was like goop soup. He says goop, like, like giving other people's opinions and making them matter. You know, other people's opinions. Don't get mixed up in the goop. Um, you know, I think that's sometimes what slows us down. And I think a lot of times what is, it is what has put the fire under my belly to reinvent is the thought that if I got a hundred years old and sitting on a porch looking at my life, I don't think I could live with not trying to do those things, not taking those chances. And so in a strange kind of way, hey, Sandra, in a strange kind of way, I, I'm almost thankful for the adversities that I face that made me have to change. Change is one of the hardest things that we will ever face, I think, as human beings, because, you know, it, 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 we don't like change. You know, change is, change is uncomfortable. Um, it's not, nobody likes change. Try, listen, something as simple as you go to your boyfriend or husband and change your hair. He can't deal with a change. Something as simple as that. So imagine changing your life or changing your career. And sometimes change happens to us. I say change can be good and embrace it. Now, those of you who know me, and, and I take it all, all y'all know me because I know everybody in here. But um, you know, I've done everything. I've been a news reporter and for many years, an investigative news reporter and anchor woman in New York City, going back to the eighties, y'all. Can you believe I've been in this business, um, news entertainment, 40 years, 40 years. Yeah, I was 10 when I started. No, <laughs> Roger, don't laugh at me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, 40 doggone years. And you don't last in this business unless you understand change <laughs> and reinventing yourself. Now, there are people who say, now, Ro, you can't reinvent the wheel. Okay, you want to buy into your limitations, you can do that. But I say, okay, so you can't reinvent the wheel, but you can certainly reinvent the vehicle that gets you where you got to go. Now, you can put wheels on a tricycle, on a little red flyer wagon, on a Maserati, on a tractor. Okay, don't invent the wheel. Don't reinvent the wheel. But let's look at how we can reinvent the vehicles that get us to where we gotta go. For me, after I did news and, and uh, in New York City and you know on ABC and gosh, Inside Edition, I got to do a talk show. And that was a total reinvention. Then after that, I said, I want to tell stories in a different way. And I came to Hollywood and became an actor and writer and producer, telling stories a different way. Did I reinvent the wheel? Well, now look, I had to look inside myself and say, what are my gifts? More importantly, more than what are my gifts? What really makes me happy? I mean, just me, not my mama and them, not my teacher and all them, the people at church. What makes me happy. Well, I love to talk and I love telling stories and I love helping people. So if you, and entertaining people and making people happy or making people move, I want to tell stories that move people, that move them in a positive way. I want to tell stories that move the earth. And so if you think about it, from my award-winning days in, in news and talk, it was all storytelling. Coming to Hollywood, storytelling. Writing that book that's on the shelf, storytelling. Even when I'm doing my voice acting work, storytelling. Whether I'm doing animation as Professor Wiseman on Curious George, Legos, Madagascar, storytelling. Whether I'm the announcer for Divorce Court or Judge Joe Brown, storytelling. Whether I'm talking about buying a hamburger, giving your kids happiness at McDonald's, or getting the troops home with Boeing, it's still Still storytelling. So the vehicle that's going to always get me there is going to be my greatest strength, which is the thing that puts the smile on my face and a skip in my heart. And that's telling a good story. 
Maybe that's the Southerner in me, because we used to sit on porches and hang clothes in the backyard and tell every story in the world that could save your life, get you something for them hemorrhoids, help you get your man back, help you get that teething child together, whatever it was, that's how we shared our lives and existence, our history, our culture, everything was over hanging clothes and sitting on the porch telling stories. That's our life as human beings, how we connect with each other. Southerners, even, even in Africa, the orators were the ones who didn't write stuff down. They told the story to the next generation who was required to tell the story to the next generation. Those are cultural things. Whether you walked around with a tablet or you drew on a cave wall, we still are passing along a legacy or a story. My question is in the reinvention retreat, what will your story be when we come out of this cloud? What will your story, now look, I gotta put some glasses on to read my own chat. Uh, <laughs> Monica says, like you told my story and changed my life. Monica, what story did I tell and change your life? You gotta come on, I'm unmuting you. Wait a minute, hold on. All right, I'm asking to unmute you. Unmute yourself. <laughs> unmute myself. Hi, Rolanda. Hey, Monica with the beautiful hair. Thank you, baby. So I don't know if you remember, but Lie Detector, my <gasps> mama and I came on. Right. And you proved that I was the daughter of the president of Venezuela. And you did you you gave me that you gave me my identity. You you changed my life by telling my mom, you did the lie detector with me and my mama. And it was, it was, it was life altering, Rolanda, really life altering. Now that. I'm going to write my book. Good. I got my DNA and I'm going to write my book and tell my story. Unfortunately, my mama passed in, in August. So now I'm going to carry this on and, and I'm trying to reinvent too, but you're telling stories. You sh showed me how telling stories can alter one's life. That's so right. I always, I, I love you girl forever for that. And oh, it's really, God, it really is. I remember that day. I'm gonna see if I can find that tape, Monica, cause I remember that day. <gasps> I, remember, I, would, oh, yeah. I would love that. I did this show called Lie Detector and it was, you know, putting yes. people with famous stories, like people who saw Bigfoot, people who saw aliens, people who said they were the, the family of a famous dictator who Monica was the child and they, nobody believed them. So we put him on the lie detector yeah. and changed her paternity to a major dictator in the world. But that also yeah. opens up a whole nother thing. Monica, please write that book. But look at how the, even, and, and don't underestimate, it's the little things that reinvent your life. Never yes. underestimate what pain and not knowing and discovery can deliver for you to rediscover and reinvent a whole new path for your life. Yes, it's time. And, and, and this is the pandemic has, has actually spurred this creative force that, that it, I, I feel that telling stories is important, especially mine now. But that's part of it because that really was a shift. It was a shift in understanding my identity, giving one. And there's so many people that struggle with identity out there in many ways. So yeah. amazing. Well, listen, let me tell you, amazing. and Monica, we're going to struggle with that even more with this pandemic. And let me tell you why. Yes. We are so connected by what we do to give ourselves worth. You know, all mm -hmm. of a sudden the rug's been pulled out from under you. You're not at that job you've been at 20 to 30 years. What is your identity? I yeah. mean, I can remember when the talk show was over and I was known as Rwanda by one name everywhere and I had to go and reinvent myself. A lot of my own personal journey was, man, all I know is that I'm the talk show host. I'm trying to be the actor, the writer, the, but everybody wants to put yeah. me in that box. You know, you it's a lot. You know, a lot of reinventing is self awareness, self discovery, and sticking with your guns. Acceptance. Now, I say the I say it in a give and take way. Let me let me clarify this because I have a list of things that we can do immediately as we leave here today and and start reinventing. But I um I I, I think it's a, a thin line because sometimes, well, all the time you have to look within and be clear about. What, it, what move you want to make. And, and it's okay to make a mistake. Let me tell you, yeah. 
One thing I've learned is there are no failures. There are no failures. One thing is only going, it's like a rock in the <laughs> river. It's only going to send the flow a different way. The, that rock yeah. in the river didn't stop the river. If you, right. were on, if you were on the White River rafting tour, it didn't stop your tour just because there was a rock in the middle. Of, in fact, it made it more exciting. The river rushed around the rock and you yeah. learned how to maneuver and you listen to the guide. You learn how to adjust to save your freaking butt. And that's a lot yep. what life is too. You know, those boulders in the river are a wonderful opportunity to readjust. You didn't fall out the freaking boat. You just had to mm -hmm. use your either or your oars, <laughs> so to speak. And just redirect. Yep, it's true. That's true. But don't look at that. And here's yep. another thing I was going to say today too. Another takeaway. Celebrate your little victories. Just the fact that you showed yes. up here today, but the people who are serious and, and Murray, you got, you've got to tell your story. It's so funny how we all see, you know, we all know each other from different pockets of life and Julia down here, yeah. Julia started her own baby business, but she reinvented herself. She started a baby bib business. We got her together. I'm looking at Roger down there. Look, former NYPD going to be a voice actor. Nice. This is crazy. Murray was my masseuse. What do you say for as a woman? She was the ba those hands. I knew they could draw all those oil paintings behind her. She is now a fine artist, but her fine art hands were the greatest massage in the world. She went from mom, you know, massaging business. Now she is one of the fine artists of America. How did she discover that? I mean, it's amazing what we can do if we believe in each other. And see, here's the thing too. I know all y'all. Now it's really good if you connect with each other sometime, you know? So you know that you're all on the same. That's why I wanted to do the reinvention, you know, sign up here because everybody who, who came through Rolanda.com is all on the brain of reinvention. One way or the other. Yep. So you always have somebody you can connect with. And, and you know, sometimes you can change your name down here and put your at where you are in social media, or if somebody resonates with you, write their name down and hit them up. Here's chat right here. Put the chat, put your information down on the chat if you want to connect. Murray, let's hear your story. Thank you so much. Yeah. Let's find your, I want to find your, that show. We got to find that show. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try talk to find some more. That show. And, write it. Do my <laughs> and we'll do a catch up about the show that we did. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Sounds Send me wonderful. Stuff. And look, y'all, my email, you can always say I'm the easiest person in the world to find. I should be one of those people hiding up in the hills. But I'm <laughs> girl, here, here's my stuff. Here's my email and hit me up and, and so I can stay. I hope I spelled it right. I can't see. Um, but yeah, hit me up, girl. So we stay in contact. Yeah, that's so I make sure I find that. And we can do a whole okay. new update and use all that old footage. Let's do that. And that'll help you promote. You made me book. get my DNA. So yes. Uh, that'll help you get your book together. You'll have all mm -hmm. of those transcribed, all that stuff. See, that's what I'm talking about. Talk about reinvention. Sometimes oh. reinvention happens with taking what you already got. You know, yeah. and my mom, I got ripped yeah. off one time. Somebody broke in my apartment. I cried so hard. My mama, my mama said from North Carolina, she said, don't look at what they took. Look at what you got left. <laughs> and I said, well, That's I right. guess it's life. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to look at the hand you dealt. What cards do I have? What can I use? What do I have that yeah. I can turn into something? What do I have that I already turned into something that I can now take and turn into something else? Mm -hmm. This book I wrote. Yeah. In the next few weeks, it's going to be an audio book, which means now I'm an audio book voice actor. Even if I pay myself a dollar, I wrote, I did a whole That's book. excellent. All right. Next, I'm going to work on the screenplay. <laughs> yeah. After the screenplay, I might even want to direct my own. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Maya Angelou was a very dear family friend of ours for about 35 years. And she was very much a mentor of mine when it came to writing and just about anything. And the beautiful thing about her is she did everything. She was a ballerina. Who knew? Or she was a Calypso dancer. Who knew? Great speaker. Uh, the People's Poet has over 100 honorary doctorates. She was a professor. 
but she was also an actor and she was a singer. And I mean, a civil rights leader, you know, a rape victim. I mean, we could go on and on and on. But she directed her first film when she was 76 years old. Fantastic. She did not write, I know why the cage bird sings until she was in her 50s, y'all. Mm. We think she wrote that in her 20s. She didn't write it until she was in her 50s. I'm going to tell you, sometimes our age gives us, hey, Angela, girl, I'm coming to you. <laughs> We're telling our reinvention stories. I see you, girl. Um, but yeah, sometimes these, uh, you know, you, you never know where your blessing will come from. And, and Marae, tell your story. I met Marae when I first moved to LA. She was one of my first friends 20 some years ago. <sighs> well, when I, when I moved here over, it's been 24 years, uh, I was a world traveler. So I've always reinvented myself because I was uh, born in Switzerland, grew up in Germany, and I just decided this was way too cold here. I didn't vibe with the people. I had to do something. I had my own hair salon by the age of 18 because I was a hairdresser. And I just decided to, to leave Europe um, with nothing, with $100 in my pocket. And uh, I could cut hair anywhere I wanted. I have always was able to survive, including now, because everybody's where there's, well, look, a where there's hair, Marie is there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And Except for I'm, Roger. <laughs> skills are a very important thing in life because you have to have more than one skill, is my belief. So the massage, I accidentally fell into it. I was actually pursuing acting and I was on set with Steven Seagal. It was, I was Sister Rose. I had my nun outfit and it, the movie was The Glimmer Man, terrible movie, um, with uh, Damon Ivory Wayans and Steven hurt his foot. So I kind of cracked his foot back in place and he's like, oh, I want you to be my, masseuse, my massage therapist. And I'm like, oh no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Hollywood. <laughs> he said, oh, my girlfriend will be with me. And it'll be, so he became my first client and he actually taught me how to do massage. And all of a sudden I started to have this high-end clientele, celebrities, actors, I started touring you know, we, it just, it was crazy. It just kind of happened. So that Marie, was- you were the first person we ever saw who brought their own table. That was like yeah. a big deal back, back in the day, you know, you had this fancy tables and- Yeah, all that, yeah. You know, yeah. And but I you were doing Rose, the celebrity I, clientele I and then I what happened? I saw you almost every week or every two weeks. I saw you for massage. I know, I was like, oh my God. But then how did the fine arts thing happen? Because now you're doing gallery showings, your, your paintings yeah. are hanging in celebrity homes. I mean. That happened exactly five years ago. And I was, uh, 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 my husband was going through a horrible divorce. Uh, we were actually already married, but the status wasn't, like his divorce was still going on, which can happen. And I was really um, done. I was, you know, depressed. And I was like, this, so then um, I saw these wine painting nights with girlfriends and, you know, and so I invited all my girlfriends, oh, let's go, go do this and, you know, have wine and paint. So, and everybody paints the same picture. And then my girlfriends all said, how come your picture looks so good? <laughs> I, put, I put a naked woman into the tree. It was sort of like a hidden, you know. I've always been very creative. I've never painted, but I've always, you know, I've done makeup and hair and even the massage is very creative. Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh, you know what? That just feels really good. I'm going to just play. I'm going to get some paints and play around and see. I wasn't thinking anything of a career now. And then I um, painted um, a ballerina at home. And I, I don't know, it just all, all of a sudden I connected and I thought, you know, this is all along I was meant to paint. Um, and, and it's amazing because you look at your paintings and it's like, how did you not know you were a painter all your life? I mean, it's crazy what gifts are hidden inside us. 
And you know, what's so beautiful is that you're not only doing the gallery showings, and because I've been to some of those shows, but you're doing a, a, a line of stationery, you're doing cards, you're doing t-shirts. You're So what we're talking about is you, you don't reinvent the wheel, but you can change the vehicle on those reels, wheels all the time. Yes, absolutely. Um, so it's been a journey, it's been a beautiful journey. Um, I definitely don't take it for granted. I know I have a lot more to learn. And I pursue, just like with everything I've pursued with the massage career I had, I pursue it full on. I'm an Aries and I don't stop at nothing. And I study <laughs> and I seek out the people that I admire, uh, people that I say, oh, don't talk to him. He never teaches or, oh, the master painter. Oh, don't, don't bother. I've met them all. All of my favorite painters, I met them all already. I, How did I you do that, them. Marae? Because a lot I of people mean, are like, I can't call them. I mean, yeah. how did you, what did you do to muster up the courage and what strategy did you use? I, I would stalk them on Instagram. <laughs> yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. Because everybody's accessible, y'all, and everybody's yeah. at home. Go let on, Marae, tell. I, I, I let them know, my God, I love your paintings. I look up to you. You know, you're a mentor to me and it's just persistent. Just, and I'm not doing it, that that's true. This, these are true comments. And then um, all of a sudden, uh, Aldo Luongo, one of my favorite painters, he started following me. All of uh -huh. a sudden he started commenting on my painting. And sure enough, a friend of mine says, you know, he's one of my best friends. He's having a private showing down in Laguna. Do you want to come? And next thing you know, I'm with Aldo drinking wine and eating pasta, one of my, you know, absolute favorite artists ever. So mm -hmm. it, it's just, a, I think it comes down to intention mm -hmm. in life. You know, what's your intention? And my intention, it's not like, oh, I want to be a famous artist or I just want to be great at what I do. And I want to bring joy into this world. And I want to be able to make a difference with, you know, the fame or everything that comes with being a public figure. I want to do good with it. I want to be, you know, an ambassador for, for others. And it's just really setting the intention to, to you, you, you can do it. I mean, you can just, you know, um, set those goals. And so it's, it's been great. It's been hard work. And I'm literally... And that's my personality. I, I'm mad that I haven't discovered it earlier. I know. I, I, that's what I said. When you see, y'all go to Marae. Marae, put you in the chat room. Put your website so people can check you out. But when you see this, y'all okay. are not going to believe this woman just started painting five years ago. <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. Somebody else who's reinvented themselves, Angela. Now, Angela... <laughs> Look, look, when, part of the other thing I was going to say about so much of reinvention is really a mindset. And, and it's a lot of quieting that chatter in our brains that are telling us, oh, you can't do it. Girl, what makes you think you can do that? What, what, who are you? You know, and all of that stuff. And in meditation, I started getting into. And I actually went to India. I had to go deliver a speech over there for the Global Peace Summit. But while I was there, I studied meditation and I met Angela. And Angela and I were at that time, hey, I'm, I'm unmuting you, Angela. Angela and I were at that time in transition, trying to figure out what, this was, this was a year before COVID even hit. So we were already like, what is the next move? How are we gonna make all this work? What are our dreams? What do we really wanna center on? And Angela came up with a business and I gotta tell you, this is another thing on the list of things to, to do takeaways, I think, for, for reinvention is, is get you some good people around you. That's you right. know, like Marae is so positive. You know, I t you know all, all of y'all here are so positive. I, and, and just, you know, people who are going to inspire you. Angela and I get on the phone and we just like, we're like accountability partners. Girl, did you do that? Did you do this? You got to do this? Or, or what do you think about that? I mean, it's having somebody to talk to. Angela, talk about the business that you started and go back to where, where you were, what made this happen. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? I'm in a park. So I, yeah, I, 
I want to start off by echoing what Marae said about intentionality and being intentional, which is really the foundation of my personal and professional life. You know, I believe that dreams, goals, manifestation happen with awareness and intention. And people call that luck, but I call it, you know, creating opportunity. And like Rolanda was saying, meditation. For me, my meditation practice has been what's made me discover more and more and more and more about myself, things that I never knew existed. I started off, um, there's glimpses of my career that I saw as a young woman. I knew I studied in psychology and social work. I knew I wanted to be of service and help people and sort of be a counselor. And I saw that. I saw myself sort of speaking, but didn't really know what it would look like. And then I sort of got off track and did real estate for a long time, but that served its purpose. And I gained tools from that. And then from there, I was like, this is just not why I'm here. I know I'm here for something greater and to serve a greater cause than helping people in New York find beautiful homes. No knock on that. It was great. It was fun. But I wanted to do more and contribute more. And um, I started a meditation practice seven years ago, taught myself. And I started getting remnants of that desire and dream to be of service as a teacher, counselor, coach. And so coaching came to me and I was literally on the internet looking for a meditation retreat. And I stumbled, stumbled as I said in quotes, on a coaching program. I signed up within a few months, left my real estate career, moved to Bermuda for two years, which was another seed that I planted and manifested a dream to live on the ocean for two years. And from there, I was a, a, a self-love coach, self-love advocate. And then that morphed into a dating and relationship uh, author, coach, teacher. And really, it morphed because that's been my journey. That's been my life as a single woman. Angela, but, but make a point that what, di what differentiates Angela, and all as we talk about in our reinvention and rediscovery, is what really tapped into her. She's not your average dating coach. <laughs> Oh, she is you. a conscious dating <laughs> coach, which yes. means it's somebody. So you're going to meet somebody who's got their head together, their, their mindfulness, their heart, spirit, soul together. I mean, she goes through a whole thing. It's just not go get on Tinder yeah. and call me no. tonight at six. It's like, not no, it's a whole process. That, 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 but, but listen, but, but all of the things you went through made your dating effort, uh, your dating help differentiate itself from anybody else out there on TV. Absolutely. I mean, and that's been, you know, I'm, I'm sharing and teaching my journey and what I've learned and the tools I've gathered. Like, you know, we don't suffer in pain for in vain. Uh oh, you guys there? That's oh, we, there got we got you. We got yeah, you. I don't, you know, we don't suffer in pain in vain. And so my suffering of being single in this life, I didn't think I'd ever have, you know, I use that pain. I use that challenge and I change it into power. I change it into purpose and my passion. And now I'm teaching and serving women that are single like me, but really, from me. The <laughs> right. But changing it from the inside out. So the conscious dating is really about intuitive dating, intentional dating, learning who you are and what you want and tapping into your creativity, your self-esteem, your self-worth. So you attract a partner on that level. So I want to just give one example of, you know, really un, un, um, unveiling and unblocking our gifts. When I was in college, high school, I hated writing my entire life. Hate it. Hated it. And I downplayed it, said I was a horrible writer. I was more science and math. <laughs> and then when I went through this, um, it was actually my dog died. And my dog died. I just went through this like really tough time. And through that pain and that journey, I took to writing again, just writing in a journal, which I always did, but I started writing more. And just to make a long story short, I've become a writer. I've co-authored four books. I but did you hear that? Last I mean, year. here's a lady who did not even get into writing, didn't think she was a writer. And her pain pulled out a gift in her. To my 40s. Yeah. To my 40s. That's amazing. Can you hear me? And I judged and criticized my writing forever. And now when people write to me and they say, you're a great writer and you're this, I'm like, who are they talking about? <laughs> and then I'll tell you another thing. I had a vision a little over a year ago that I knew didn't come from sort of my, um, my waking self. It was something much deeper in me that said, you're going to be on TV. Because I never, I hate video camera my whole life. I shied away from camera. And this past year I've been on, t I didn't, I didn't envision that. I'm going deeper into what I enjoy doing that things just open up. Now I just launched an apparel line um, that's in alignment with my, um, conscious dating and being a vessel of love and relationship 
and it's called um, The Love Pandemic. It's shopthelovepandemic.com, and it's all inspired to spread love, not fear, and all the other negative viruses we have. So I never thought I'd be an apparel owner. I don't even know where that And let me from. tell y'all something. <laughs> Angela, put the, put the apparel, put your website down there in the chat. Okay. Because uh, y'all gonna want these leggings. <laughs> they are cute and these cups and these little t-shirts and stuff. She created a whole brand. You're not gonna believe it. Go over there when you put she puts it. They got love warrior on down your <laughs> leg and looking all cute. I said, look at I don't know club. where it came from. Look I, how far I really that came. Now she's designing clothing lines. And you know, <laughs> you never know what you have in store for yourself. And, and sometimes it takes the pain to pull it out, especially at, at this time in our lives. We have, a, oh, we have encompassed a lot of life to share. You know, even the pain that we've yeah. gone through. My book was a lot of pain. It was, it was you know, the pain of a, of a divorce, the pain of, a, of, a, of, of my husband cheating on me, the pain of, and the pain of, not, of going through the Jim Crow South. I put all of my pain in my book. That became right. award winning. And it got it out of me. I'm done with it now. Now it's gonna be a movie. I'm gonna make some money off that pain that jerk put me through. You know? And then <laughs> so, and then and, but your story is gonna inspire other people, right? I think we go through the things that we go through so that we can be a vessel to teach and inspire other people. That's it's not, right. It's not just in vain. So I feel like if we're not reinventing, which I love what Rolanda's doing, we're not growing, we're not changing. I mean, there's we're supposed to have multiple gifts. We're not the same person and from day to day so different parts of ourselves become unmasked and i just love it i'm i'm ready to go i feel like i'm going through a personal transition right now you know and i'm i'm open to it it's going to be a little rough trying to get to whatever's next but i know what's on the other side is going to be right. something great that's right angela i love your attitude you know see it's that kind of thing that we like this is what i do when i say yes 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 um, you know, you pick that up from Ray, you pick that up from Angela, the positive attitude. I mean, how could good things not come to these two women? Their positive attitude, Thank their you. inner receptive spirit, open to the universe, willing to give of their gifts, willing to help other people, to bring beauty and joy to other people's lives, to help them tell their stories. That's what they're doing. My God, how could they not benefit from those gifts? Has it been easy? Of course not. Can they just walk out and throw a painting up on the wall and say, here it is? No, it takes work. And it takes that execution that we're talking about too. Beautiful story. Angela, I'm so proud of you. I can't even stand it. Go and check out these websites. Sitting up here talking is one thing, but when you see what these women have accomplished, and we're talking about a very short we're well, not very short, but, but within the past five years, look at the difference they made. We've already been, we're already halfway through since the pandemic started. We're already halfway through a year. So look how fast time is moving and how quickly time is moving. And now is the time to jump out and do that. Julia, you want to talk about your, your, your baby bib store? Okay, hold on. All right, I got to unmute you. Angela, thank you so much, honey. Okay, Julia, come on. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having the webinar today. I have been working on baby bibs. I've been giving a lot of stuff away for free. Yeah. And, um, baby bibs, yes, a couple of friends had newborn babies, a baby girl, and I told her, gave her some bibs and also some burping blankets as well to go with it. So she likes that. I told her to take a picture, but I haven't gotten a picture yet. And I'm just giving away stuff right now. And but that's okay, Julia. Sometimes that's business because uh, that's going to help you get your brand out. I remember when you were trying to figure out what you wanted to do. Yes. And we were working together and we came up with this baby line and you know, now Julia has a plan of making the entire outfit for the baby, the hats, the purse to go with it, the whole thing. But we said, let's start with something simple, something you can. I said, because what happens if you set up this website and go into business, hang your shingle on the door and 500 people show up on baby bibs tomorrow for us for a baby shower? I'm continuing with your webinars, Rolanda, so that you can continue to help me move forward and you know guide me so little a little bit at a time 
Thank we you. We got it. And listen, I'm giving this out for free too. But that's what we do to get our to get our business ideas out there. This is part of branding. I mean, you know, I didn't even realize that I'm called the reinventionist because, you know, back in the day, they used to think I was schizophrenic and not focused because I was, I wouldn't do just one thing. I wouldn't do what they told me. I wouldn't do what they told me to do. That's what, that's what my problem was. They were just like, you just, wow. And I was like, well, why should I just do one thing? Because you should be focused. It's like, I am focused on three different things. Nobody does that. That's schizophrenic. That's not you know, today it's called multiple streams of income. Remember, people think you're crazy till you start making money. They think you're absolutely nuts until you start making money. And I think one of the greatest benefits is I've always been a kind of weirdo, always growing up in life. I mean, I was growing up in the South. I was faster than anybody, talk faster. I mean, I was a little kid who'd come over. They'd say, duck, here comes Rolanda. <laughs> you know? So I've always kind of been an oddball. So I don't really listen to people. I think that's been a blessing for me. I don't care what you say. You know, if you're going to call me wild, let me give you something to talk about now. How about that? <laughs> Jennifer, okay? TikTok. 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 Exactly. Jennifer's laughing at me. Baby, I did a TikTok dance. I'm so proud of that. Jennifer, I think I watched that dance 50 million times because I couldn't too, believe girl. I did it. I did a TikTok, y'all, and it was the cutest little old thing, and I got more attention on that thing. And see, my audience, I'm Professor Wiseman on Curious George, and I do Legos. So my audience is one to 101. So I got to do everything for everybody. Here's Auntie Roll on TikTok again. I did one TikTok where my hairdresser was giving me some baby hair. Do you know that mug has almost 450,000 hits? I haven't done anything in my 40-year career, known all over the world by one name, they got 450 some thousand hits, except this little kitty TikTok thing, and somebody putting baby hair on me. It's crazy. And I'm going to tell you this somebody who I study, and I'm of a different generation, but I'm going to tell you, this even playing field now. Perfect example Tabitha Brown. Now, y'all, I bring up Tabitha all the time because I love Tabitha Brown. Pretty little girl, little afro. She, all she does is cook vegan food for her family. And that's her business that she started online and Instagram cooking. She had me cook. She had me roasting slices of a yam and putting guacamole on it and actually not missing meat. I'm like, girl, you are good. So I followed her. Everybody's following her. She's got this Southern voice. Look her up, Tabitha Brown on Instagram. She just got a show. First of all, she got signed with CAA, one of the top agencies. Why? Because the agents are at home watching TV like everybody else, watching YouTube and everything like everybody else. This woman has got two point some million followers by cooking vegan food. Why? Well, vegan's hot right now when you're trying to keep your immunity up and black folks trying to save their lives. They, we need a vegan leader. CAA bought her up. Guess who just picked her up and given her a talk show? Ellen. You're going to see Tabitha as a major, major talk show host. All she was doing was cooking vegan food at home for her family. But she loves that vegan food. Your enthusiasm is contagious. If you love what you do and people see you loving what you do, they don't love what you do too. It's just kind of how that works. So show your enthusiasm. I love the word enthusiasm because the middle word is theos, which is God. So anything that your soul gets enthusiastic about, God got something to do with that, y'all. And you may not believe in God, whoever you believe in, trust and believe is something bigger than you working when your heart starts jumping over something. Foot starts tapping, get a little sweat on the brow. Mm, I like that. That felt good. Something that you do, it felt so good, you got to do it again. Do it again. Claim it. That's how you start finding the things that you love. It, it, you know, the, the stories we've heard today are freaking amazing. And when you go and see what these women have built, and, and put your thing in there too, Julia, put your, put your baby bib, uh, website in there. You know, Julia didn't even know how to build a website. I've got a girl in Thelma in Charlotte, North Carolina, when the COVID first hit, I said, I don't have a mask. Next thing I knew, 
Miss Thelma, who's 70 something years old down here in Charlotte, she's the lady who sews all the little girls' dresses and makes all the wedding stuff, does the church ladies. <laughs> she said, well, I've got all this material. I'll make you some masks. She sent me a mask for every day of the week. I said, Miss Thelma, you need to set up a website and start selling these things. She said, well, I got a whole room of material I don't use. I said, well, set up a website. She said, I don't know how to set up a website. I said, you got a daughter or a son. Who you got now? Who you got? I know you got some nieces and somebody in the street, somebody on the block. Next thing we knew, they have set up Uncovered LLC. Go check it out. Her daughter got in there and learned how to make a website. I built my own website on GoDaddy because I had time to sit down and do it. Who would ever dream that a 61-year-old woman could compete with any freaking millennial right now to build a website? But I had the time and I ain't got the money to spend thousands of dollars to nobody to build no website. So I sat and I learned it myself. GoDaddy even hit me up on Twitter and said, you did a great job. I said, thank you. They said, we love how you use the video. I said, thank you, GoDaddy. Now maybe I could teach somebody. Maybe I'll go build your website for the thousands of dollars I would have paid somebody to do. I just learned another skill. But that's how we do it. We've got the time. We are in isolation. This thing ain't going away. It's going to get worse. That's another reason I'm doing this thing because we're going into the second wave of this. So start getting creative. You ain't getting out of the house now. And the beautiful, ironic thing about this whole time is that we're not finding the answers and solutions outside of ourselves and outside of the house. You don't have anybody but yourself to depend upon. And when you're looking in there at all those gifts that God gave you, you trust and believe he gave you the batteries, the adapters, the electrical plugs, and all of the stuff to go with it. But you got to get down there and dig deep and find out what makes you happy. You know, I, um, I was kind of laughing at myself. I'm not one to really use all of these, uh, what do they call them, the, the keyboard, you know, the keynotes and all that stuff. But I did come up with one. Oh, by the way, if y'all don't know, wait, hold on. Let me get back over here to um, here. Do y'all do you know who what Tabitha who Tabitha is? Let me just show you a picture. It says I want y'all to know who Miss Tabitha is. Lord, I'm trying to do this like I'm not over forty. Uh, this is Miss Tabitha. Y'all seen her? There she is cooking her little yam bacon. And she said, she just says, and I'm going to do that because it's my business. Sweetest little girl, go tab of her, look her up online and follow her because just amazing how doing what you love got the attention of some of the top people. She says in one of her videos how she lives close to CAA, the big agency, and how she used to walk past the big agency and look up there and say, oh my God, what I would give to be represented by somebody in that building. And she said, you know, I'm an actress, but I wasn't a big actress. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know how I was ever going to get with CAA. And then she started cooking vegan food for a family on Instagram. And now she's going to be one of the biggest stars. I wanted to break down why I call this a retreat. Can y'all see that? Everybody can see my little shared thing. And, you know, you, everybody breaks down all these little names. But it does. I mean, I think when you talk about the R is not only reinvention, but recreation. But I look at it as recreation. It should be fun what we're doing. Keep the fun. If it, you know, I have to say it. If it ain't fun, I ain't doing it. That goes with jobs, people, boyfriends, clothes. If it does not bring me joy, it has to go. I don't care who it is. There are a lot of people who I've reevaluated during this lockdown time that aren't going to be in my life when this cloud lifts. I can't take the negativity anymore. I can't take the petty drama anymore. And they're getting in the way of me having fun in life. Got to go. E, there's that enthusiasm. Make sure that it has enthused, that you get enthusiastic about whatever it is you're discovering. Maybe it's a new course you take. Maybe you learn a new language. Go on YouTube, honey. You can learn anything in the world on YouTube and get enthusiastic about it. YouTube is a university. Don't get it twisted. Go on over there and learn you something. Testimony. Everybody's got a great story. We listened to what Marie said today. 
We listen to Julia's story today. We listen to Angela's story today. You listen to mine. You told yourself your own. We all got a different story. Nobody has the same story. Just like no two people have the exact same talent. Just because somebody's doing a webinar doesn't mean that 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 um, that I can't do my own. Oh, oh, I see. I'm about to lose some power. R is for the results that we're going to get by having these kinds of conversations. And the the, um, the execution, there are things that we have to do. Let me, y'all forgive me, I'm trying to pull up the phone. Um, there are things that we have to do to make it happen. You know, my mama used to say, God believes in matching grants. She say, you do your part and he'll meet you the other halfway. But it's not just going to come, you know, some people say, oh, I'm into this manifestation of my own reality. I'm going to sit here and wait till it comes through the window. Well, honey, you'll be sitting up there when this cloud is over, broke as a three-legged dog. So you better start executing. Whatever that is, I don't care if it's getting a, a, a Facebook page, execution I demand must be uncomfortable in some ways. Because that's how we grow. We don't grow in comfort. See, that's what's happening to a lot of people. They like, oh, I'm getting this government check. I ain't doing nothing. I'm going to sit right here and just do nothing. And then you're going to get stuck in doing nothing. And when your business curve is going down, then you're going to be trying to reinvent down here in the valley. I'm saying, let's reinvent right here so that we can go like this, not trying to pull our boots up out of the valley. Execution is what's going to make that difference. Even if it's signing up for this, we're going to be doing this again tomorrow. We can we can revamp um, accountability. You know, when I when I say, "Hey, Marie, what's going on? Hey, Julia, what's going on?" You know, that's a little bit of accountability I'm holding on them too, and they're doing the same for me. You know, also accountability makes you look at yourself in ways that you may not have seen yourself before, because there's so many times in my life that I have recreated because somebody believed in me or talent I had that I didn't know. I didn't even think about that. My talk show, for instance. I had given up the news business and had done a little talk show on, on lifetime television called Attitudes. I don't know if y'all remember that back in the early 90s. Left everything. The doggone show was canceled in nine months. I had given up everything. I just bought a house, had a car. I was like, this is, this is horrible. And out of the blue, I get a call from Roger King, who is the chairman of King World, the guy who discovered Oprah, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, Inside Edition. I said, Rolando, I want you to come and do a talk show. He said, you got a lot more to say than just a minute and 30 seconds. Lead to, I was like, for five, for many years, I said no to Roger, because I just couldn't see me do it. I was like, I'm a news reporter. I don't do talk show but he knew that I could do it. Now, it's one of the things I'm known most for. It wasn't something I chose. It was an opportunity that fell on my lap because I desperately needed to save my house. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? My voice acting career, that started when I'd given up everything and came out here to act after the talk show, came out here to act, and within the first nine months of my being here, the writers went on strike. It was the longest strike in Hollywood history. I went from being an internationally syndicated talk show host to serving pizza on a picket line to my union members. I had to think of something. I had to save another house. I said, well, when I called 411, back in the day when you called 411, I said, the operator knows my voice. Maybe there's something in the voice thing. And it wasn't until I took the workshops and really dove into it that I changed my life and got a new career. But all of those things were because I had to, I had, I had to. That's where the last T comes in, the triumphs and the transformation. Because that's what all of that fun and enthusiasm and the stories you tell and the little bitty results you get, the execution, the work you do, the accountability, the pat on the back, celebrating your own little victories along the way. That's going to keep you so distracted from the crap that's going on in the real world that you, I promise you, you will see major, major successful changes in your life. You'll see some reinvention happen if you stick with those things. I also believe in teamwork. Together, everyone achieves more. 
And that's why I do these freebie webinars. I'm not trying to sell you a reinvention retreat. Let me tell you something. I had to reinvent my reinvention retreat. <laughs> Look, that's how, that's how much reinvention I've had to go through. Back, remember a year ago we were doing the reinvention retreat. Nobody understood what the reinvention thing was. And it was like, you skip to a year later, everybody understands what reinvention was. But the challenge that I got from a lot of you listening was, Hey, listen, I get the whole reinvention thing, but I want to do voice acting. That's the way I want to reinvent myself. And more than a dozen of you guys wanted to do it, and it helped me create a whole new thing. Now I'm a voice acting coach, which is wonderful because I'm watching people soar. I'm watching my students go and get auditions, hearing from casting agents, applauding them on their work. They're working hard. They're making a change, right, Roger? Roger's up in there. Sandra's up in there. Sherry's up in there. And listen, and and Lady Iris, we have our grandmother in there in the in the, my voice acting workshop, and she she said she wanted to do it because she read books to her kids. And when she came in, Lady Iris didn't have more than her phone. That was what she was working with. She didn't have a computer. Now she's got her computer. She's got her Rode microphone, her headphones. She's going to do a talk show. She's going to do a podcast. She's got, I'm like, okay, I just thought you wanted to read a script or two. Uh-uh. This equipment has blown her out just because she's trying new things. She's in her 70s and she's starting her own talk show and I know she'll be great. So you never know what one thing will lead to the next thing. So stay engaged, keep your faith and believe in yourself and stay positive so that you can attract good, positive people. You know, if you really are serious and intentional about what you want to do, do your vision boards, do your gratitude, do your meditation, whatever it is to center your mind and focus on your intentions it can't help but come to you. All of a sudden, people that you don't even, you didn't even dream would come to you will start coming to you. Listen to Marae, an artist she dreamed of just having a minute with is now coming to her, her shows. How can she not be the great artist that she is? Because everything in the universe is coming together to make sure that dream comes true. So don't underestimate the power of a dream, the power of your intention, the power of the talent and the gifts that God already gave you that are waiting to bust out. So your gifts will drag you where you have to go. You'll be surprised with what you got up in there. And I can't wait to see the new stuff I'm going to discover. I don't even know what's all up in there. But I know when my life is over, my epitaph's going to say, all used up. Because she used everything she had. Now, maybe because she needed to pay for her bills. <laughs> But whatever we have to do, we've already got it within us. So I just want to say, stay positive, stay strong. If you know some friends who might want this message tomorrow, we're going to be doing the same thing tomorrow from 10 to 11. There you go. Mo Monica, I'm going to look up your, that's, your story is amazing. I can't wait to see that book. But really, I mean, just... And don't underestimate that how much time we've spent on this earth, we have so much to give back and so many people who need us. So don't feel bad about doing something for free if you have to, that's part of business. And, um, and it's also part of what makes you feel good. It makes you so happy when you can help people and give back. So find opportunities where you can do that because I promise if you're ever depressed on a day, help somebody, reach out to somebody, and I promise it'll take that away. Those of you who are interested, if you're interested in voice acting workshop, we have some of my students here. We have a great time in that workshop. It's a six week program. I can talk with you about that. Um, and you can hit me up at Rolanda at Rolanda.com. If you or somebody you know may be interested, you can certainly hit me up for that. Any questions or anything before we say goodbye and get on back into our Saturday? Yeah, Roger. God pay love to everybody. It's good to see you, Sherry. Yeah, Sherry. In my prayers. Um, I love this. I really do. It, it, because to be honest with you, where I come from, this is jumping off in the deep end of the pool. <laughs> you know? And 
to be honest with you. I, I, I come from, if, if, there's, if there's a common word from my family, it's security. You don't move unless you have security. I always wanted to be an actor. As time went on, I started to realize, hey, I could be a voice actor as well. This was not something I, I, I wanted to do. It was in my heart. But my logic says, does it give you a pension? <laughs> or is there security here? And a lot of times, I've, I push those dreams off. That's why my some of my colleagues who were, who were acting while he was still doing police work, I, I was part astonished and, and, and part, you know, admired them for, for what they were doing. But I knew for myself, I didn't have the stones to do that. Now, what happened when I retired, I, I, I kind of like that dibbled and dabbled and stuff like that until my sister, who's been acting for Ian's, she did something that my jaw fell to the ground. I mean, she was, she was working for Montefiore Hospital in medical billing. And I'm like, great, you got a secure job. Your job, right. I see a pension coming down your way. Right. She threw that off to the side and went to acting full time. And to say that I was astonished, stunned, stupefied, I, I mean, I got more words, but we don't have much time. <laughs> but that was the one thing that spurred me to be where I'm at now. Good. I said, if she had the stones to do something like that, to throw caution to the wind, mm -hmm. follow her dream, there's no more excuse anymore. That's right. Now, she may not have the security, but she's got her happiness, and the security yeah. will come, therefore. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm, I'm going to wrap up on this note. It was very interesting because I was like, you know how when you're about to do a presentation and you look up the meaning of the word and what does reinvention mean and da 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 da, da. And I was like, you know, everybody knows what reinvent, recreate, whatever. But one of the one of the the words, the synonyms, a word like reinvention, was resuscitate. And I thought, wow, that's like save your life. That means bring you back to life because you are gasping and on your way, resuscitate. Wow. And then I said, that was my little tap on the shoulder to say what you're talking about is important. You know, even if it's for you to tell your own self that story, Roger, once again, and to see the joy in her life and you are stepping out on it. Give yourself a, a, an applause for the courage, the, the stones that you now have, because you've done it now. You know, it's so interesting that today is the day we were worried about last year. And everything's okay. Nobody ate us up. Nobody's going to eat you up. What's the worst that could happen? There are no failures. There are experiences that lead you to the next thing. Sometimes you say, you can't get there without going here. Sometimes you have to go through stuff so you never have to do it again. I mean, a lot of people hate what they do. Thank God COVID came along so I can get the hell out of this nasty-ass job. Get away from these people. I hate going to work. No, you know, people have more heart attacks on Monday morning because 80% of Americans hate going to work. They hate their jobs. Well, here's a time to change it. So what? You're not making six figures. You'll make five. So you'll be happy. I mean, you have really have to make your decision on what your happiness is. You know, there's sometimes I may not have what I want to have in the bank, but as long as I'm happy and I got my health, I can work out the rest. I can work it all out. That to that that will come as long as I'm happy. But that's a big difference. That's a big difference. Say something See, real quick. Huh? Can I say something real quick? Of course you can, Jennifer. Okay. So um <laughs> with that pretty so smile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Simply Soap and Water is um, a brand that is uh, hand washing on the go, and it's not hand sanitizer at all. You can get this on IG, on um, Simply Soap and Water's Instagram. Um, I just got hired, um, actually on my 35th birthday, to um, really work out the brand and what it's about. Really? And, uh, now, Jennifer, yeah, you got to tell yeah. us how to get jobs like that. 
how we can start promoting people's products online? Um, just go to their website at www.simplysoapandwater.com and they have stuff where you could sell the product and it's great. Okay, they I like you what you're saying. That, that's, that's another hustle. You know, everybody wants their product sold right now. And if you yeah. represent an audience that a product might need, it may not be a bad idea to reach out. You know, I see a lot of my friends just doing mm -hmm. stuff like, oh, I just love this cup that I'm drinking out of, blah, 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 blah. Because they're trying to get, and they'll hashtag the business because they're trying to get the business to notice them and they go, oh, here's some more cups you can sell. You know, people are using strategy these days because we have access to people we normally wouldn't have access to. So really take advantage of that too. We'll talk about more about marketing and stuff tomorrow. But I love you guys. I got to go. Look, Saturday is cleaning day around Shea Row and I got some, some floors I need to mop. So I got to I'll go. Do it.